This is Chef Pachi, and today I have the three steps to create the perfect cheese table for the holidays and also how to learn to eat at a cheese table so that you don't get too full or too high of calories. Step one, setting the table. So it depends if it's gonna be a large table or just a cheese platter for two, but all we want is to have something beautiful and that will make us feel relaxed and inviting. So I have all different kinds of platters. I have wooden platters, I have woven platters, I have glass platters. <clears throat> what we're looking for is for you to see that you can use anything you have at home and the more variety the better it gets especially if you have different heights if it's just two of you grab like this one of the tables add a cheese cut up a little bit so it looks inviting add a fruit and some toast or bread or tortilla at, we're going to talk about it later when we talk about why we're choosing the carbs we choose. Coming up, how to combine them so you can trick your body and eat delicious food without overeating in calories. If you are four to six guests, maybe eight, you can make just two cheese boards, put a beautiful bunch of flowers in the middle, and enjoy it, just like that. If it is four, six, or eight of you, you can also make a beautiful arrangement of two platters and some fruit or a bunch of flowers between the two. You want your table or your platters or your house look beautiful when you wanna eat or have guests. And my secret is that I use a lot of fruit, not only because it's great to munch in, but because it looks beautiful, you're gonna see at the end, when you use fruit to decorate, you waste nothing. You add some flowers, some fruit, and then you have the fruit for your week. So now, step two, the cheese. Let's see how I choose my cheese. So when I have a lot of guests like today and I have a big table, this is a table for about 30 people and I want to get something, I want to get food that everybody likes. Since not everyone likes the same thing, you ha I make a choice of different varieties of cheeses so that at least one or two cheeses are appealing and nice for other people. So I have a goat's cheese and I have a cow's cheese and I have a vegan cheese and I have some brie, like a, a soft cheese and I also have a spread cheese. So I buy a lot of different kinds of cheese so you can see how a variety of cheese is perfect. It's the one you and your guests like. Step three, putting together the smart cheese table. Now with the four basic parts of the cheese table, the cheese, the carb, the fruit, and the vegetable. Other than that, we can have some meats, some cold cuts, and we can have some nuts and seeds. Let's start with the bigger pieces of cheese and put them on different platters. I love apples and their color is amazing. If you put a knife and an apple, people are gonna cut the apple, slice the cheese, and eat it with a piece of apple. That's gonna be much more filling than just having one cheese dice after the other after the other. Now, we're gonna put our hard cheese in that table and let me show you how I use the cheese that already comes sliced. These are very good sometimes when you're alone and you just want to do a quick cheese platter for one or for two and they're already cut. They're goat's cheese. 
all you have to do is check it out slide your hand over it separate the pieces and here I have them with some tangerines for our soft cheese I'm gonna put it in another platter and I'm gonna leave the paper in the bottom why I just want my table to look a little more up relaxing to let people know that they can bite in without feeling overwhelmed or without feeling that you know I don't want to be the first that cuts into this cheese or this dish check this out this is the one cheese I made and it is basically made of ricotta and some yogurt olives and sun-dried tomatoes and you're gonna get the link for this recipe that's already on YouTube and check it out with an ice cream scoop it looks amazing you could even do individual cheese platters if you have a sit-down meal you could actually make tiny scoops of the cheese and put some thin slivers of some delicious like rye bread with nuts and a couple of slices of peach for example now let's talk about the carbs that I'm using I am using these tiny little flatbreads that are made with quinoa. Green ones are made with quinoa, the white ones are made with brown rice. The good thing of using quinoa and brown rice flatbreads is that they're also filling and full of fiber. It's a great complement to any cheese steak. The recipe is also on a YouTube channel and you can probably get some. Here in Panama, I have a friend that makes them. They're called Healthy. They are now I also have some crackers and I use multi C crackers or whole grain crackers because then they're more filling and the more fiber you have, the more filling you feel, the better you eat and the better you digest. Here in Panama, we have this beautiful bread that is like our own Panamanian brioche. Only sell it during Christmas and it's amazing. So let's give it a special place in the table, open it up and set it alone in the platter so that it becomes a centerpiece. This is what I call the Panamanian brioche. It's, I mean, it is absolutely out of this world. And I guess that's why they, don't own, they only make it during the holidays. Now for the toast, I also buy some toast so you don't think that you have to like make all the crackers or make all the cheese. I'm showing you a complete array of possibilities so that you can make up your mind with the things you like best. So here again some whole grain bread that has been toasted and will be served next to the cheese that I made. So we have our different varieties of cheese. We have our vegan cheese, our brie, the cheese I made. We have some parm, we have some edam, and we have the fruit that we have, our apples, pears, tangerines so that they are and I choose them small so that you don't have to cut them and be worried about them browning so each person can cut a piece and then leave the rest and somebody will cut them but they will be eaten somewhat fast and they won't brown now for our vegetables you can get celery and carrots sliced and just make him look amazing instead of just calories carrots and celery so how do we do this put them in a beautiful glass that's it now we put them in this beautiful glass or container and they give height to the table and they give color and they are easy to pick and go so let me tell you something. For example, almost all of those carrots have the same calories than three slices of the cheese 
right next to it. So this is the secret. This is the important part. Combining high calorie foods with low calorie and high fiber foods that are going to be a perfect complement to your health, to your being filled, to your feeling full and satisfied, plus being able to eat delicious food. For example, the time it takes to peel and eat one of these tiny tangerines or nectarines, no, tangerines, that's about 20 calories, is a lot of time that we are preventing ourselves from just putting more and more pieces of cheese in our mouth without realizing that you're eating without even tasting the food because sometimes when we eat so fast we're just eating and talking and we don't realize that we just ate it like at the movies the popcorn you know you just eat it but you're not savoring it but if you take your time without knowing or doing it on purpose like why by peeling the tangerine or by cutting the apple you're actually shortening the time of eating cheese at the table. It doesn't mean you're not going to eat it, but it's going to be the perfect compliment. Part three are portions. Step three are the portions. How do we present our cheese so that it looks bigger than it is and so people leave a lot without having that much cheese. It's not that you don't want to spend the money in cheese, but you can play some tricks and slice it so people can use smaller portion sizes. Check it out. The first thing I'm going to show you is how we cut our round pieces of cheese. Let's grab this small piece of brie, and this small piece of brie is eight ounces. Now we can cut it in four and then in half and we have a slice that is one ounce. But check it out, if we take a slice of apple and cut that one ounce in half, we have half an ounce, which actually might look like nothing, but look at it. It's not nothing, it's right this you're going to see in my hand and on top of a slice of apple it looks perfect. Now cutting squares or dice of cheese. This is a great trick. Dice and squared pieces of anything are larger than their round or misshaped counterparts. So if we cut pieces, then make logs like we're gonna cut slices and then cut them on the bias. We are removing a lot of that extra amount of cheese that we eat when we eat a square piece. It's amazing, it looks much more, you'll see. Here, we're gonna cut a log into six pieces. Here we have six slices of cheese. On the right side, we have that same log cut on angles and on the bias. So it's amazing. You look like you're eating much more, your pieces look larger, and you're having less. You can also cut them smaller, so you have smaller bite-sized pieces. Remember, an ounce of cheese is about 100 calories, and an ounce of cheese is about two to three dice. But if you cut them, you can have six pieces of cheese and enjoy them with the fruit, with the, the toast, with the vegetables, with all of those amazing foods by just making one or two changes and you're going to like them exactly the same, maybe even more, with the fruit and the vegetables and dipping and creating all these amazing looking foods that you're going to enjoy with no regret, no remorse, and you will be feeling full and satisfied. Pachi!